The term Hindu rate of growth was first used by Indian economist Raj Krishna in the 1970s to describe the ultra slow pace of economic growth in India in the years following its independence in 1947. At the time, Indian economy was growing at an average rate of around just 3.5% per year, which was significantly lower than the growth rates of many other developing countries in South Asia. But was the religious attribute really responsible for this slow growth? No, it was the Nehruvian bureaucratic and socialistic framework that kept India poor for decades. Suppose that Vallabha had been the young man and Nehru had been the older man and Vallabha would have been, obviously would have become the Prime Minister of India. Certainly in the economic plan, there would have been a total, totally different situation than the one that exists today. You frequently disagreed with Pandit Nehru. Um, when you when you articulated or shared those disagreements, what was his response? But when you, on this kind of thing, uh, economics, which of which he knew very little, in my opinion, and then I would try to 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 bring the conversation to economics, nationalized nationalization, bureaucracy. He was not only not interested, but he wasn't willing even to talk. There is no doubt that India's economic growth and development was slower than that of countries like Singapore or South Korea during the mid-20th century that were even poorer than India but achieved massive success by following pro-developmental policies. There were certain aspects of Nehruvian bureaucratic framework that hindered India's economic growth and development. One of the key features of Nehruvian bureaucratic framework was the establishment of a system of licenses and permits that regulated the establishment and operation of businesses in India. This system came to be known as the License Raj, was intended to promote state control and prevent the economic concentration of powers in the hands of a few individuals or companies. However, it also created a complex and bureaucratic system that made it difficult for businesses to operate and stifled entrepreneurship and innovation. Nehru also emphasized the importance of state control and government ownership of key industries such as heavy machinery, infrastructure and energy production. The Indian government under Nehru nationalized Air India even if they were running five-star hotels. It led to inefficiencies and lack of competition in these sectors. India's process of industrialization was relatively slow in part due to the focus on self-sufficiency and import substitution. While these policies helped protect domestic industries, they were limiting the access to foreign capital and technology. That could have helped drive innovation and growth as it happened in case of Singapore, South Korea, Japan, even Communist China in 1980s and later in 1990s in India. Both Singapore and South Korea had strong authoritarian governments that were able to implement rapid economic reforms and incentivize foreign investment. But Nehru, on the other hand, wasn't a dictator. Or maybe he was a democratic dictator because nobody had the guts to raise his voice against him. He remained the Prime Minister of India from independence till his death. Nehru and subsequent Prime Ministers like his daughter Indira Gandhi despised private industries and frowned upon them. Thanks to the very mediocre, slow and tedious start of economic engines, India lost the economic race to its South East and East Asian neighbours by two decades. If China stops growing today, then it would take India literally two decades to be on China's or Singapore or South Korea's current level of economic development. That's how far behind India is.